I know it's hard to believe, but it's been over 40 years since I took my first evangelistic trip to the state of Mississippi. I had some young men with me. I was pretty young myself, but in my 30s, and uh, had some young men, one from Miami and two from Ontario, I think one or two from New Jersey. And we were working our way across the Gulf Coast, and we came to one little town. Uh, there was just one couple, Christian couple there, and we were going door to door, talking to people about the Lord. It was extremely hot. One of the young men had a serious migraine headache almost every day with losing his breakfast in the bushes, so to speak. And it was it was just a really hard go. And we had a little garden club for a meeting place in the evening, but really had very little response from the community. And the last night, I think we were pretty discouraged. And the time for the meeting came. There was nobody there. And uh, then the door opened. After we had had a little time of prayer, I think we'd sung a hymn, and the door opened and in came a man. He was wearing a uniform. He had his name stitched on his uh, breast, and he told us his story that uh, his wife had left him some months before, and that day he had lost his job, and uh, total despair had gripped his soul, and he had decided to go home and end his life. And as he was walking along, he cut through a little wooded area, and he saw a little piece of paper bundled into a ball, and he absentmindedly kicked it, and then curiosity got the better of him. And he reached down, and he took it, and he straightened out this piece of paper, and it was an invitation to the gospel meeting. And he said, okay, God, I'll give you one more chance. And he had come along to the meeting that evening, and, and that night he professed to put his trust in the Lord Jesus. And I thought to myself, I don't know how many hundreds of those little handbills we handed out, but the only one that God used in a life that we know of was one that had been discarded. And I think of the words of the wise man in Ecclesiastes 11.6 who said, In the morning sow your seed, and in the evening do not withhold your hand, for you do not know which will prosper, either this or that, or whether both alike will be good. So the message here is this. Our responsibility is sowing, and God's responsibility is to bring the increase. And so if we are faithful, and the scripture makes it clear that if we sow good seed, which is the gospel, and if we sow bountifully, then we will reap bountifully. There is this promise in the word of God that whether we know about it or not, God is at work, and he may well have used some of those other handbills. I don't know, but I do know that the one he used was the one that someone had discarded. I don't know where that other person will spend eternity, the one who rejected the offer. But I do know that God uses the things that other people cast away, the things that people despise, are the things that God uses for his glory. So be encouraged, Christian. Sometimes you share a gospel verse here or there. You speak a kind word to someone. You hand out a tract or a pen with a Bible verse. You have no idea that sometimes many years later, even generations later, God uses it in the salvation of precious souls. He's a really good farmer, and he's determined to get the best crop possible. And so let's do our part in sowing seed in the morning and in the evening. In other words, all day long, and looking to God to bring about the prosperity of the harvest and that both not just this or that, but both alike may be a good harvest for the glory of Christ.